get your breath. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Blow the river, blow. Flood the nation with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Consume all my darkness Shine on me Shine on This me. is our prayer Shine, Jesus, shine Put your word, God has put his word in our mouths so we can declare his light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness. Ever changing from glory to glory, mirror heal me alive, tell your story. We're going to declare God's word. We'll sing the last verse. We're going to say, Lord, shine across this land. Shine across our hearts, Lord. Make the dark places light again. Make the dead places come to life again. Jesus, we pray that you would revive our land. You would revive our hearts, Lord. That we would capture your passion and your desire for this nation, Jesus. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory, mirrored in him we our lives, this is our prayer, shine on me, sing it out, shine on me, shine Jesus, shine.
God has spoken into our hearts and he's declared his light in our lives. Amen. Darkness has no more hold over us. How many of us believe that? How many of us know that today? We don't live in fear anymore of the darkness. We live in the place of victory. Amen. We live in the victory that Jesus has brought for us. Amen. That he has spoken his light and we live in the light of the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, say that again. Darkness has no power over me. I live in the light of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, turn to three or four people around you and tell them you are free in Jesus' name. Come on. Do I believe God has put his word in our lives and just like we sang, Lord, let there be light. How many of us believe that God will do something as we pray for our land? Amen. Amen. So this morning, right now, we're going to take time to, to prophesy to each other. Okay? We're going to take time to declare God's word to each other. Right? This next song is called Shouts to the North and the South, to the East and the West. We're going to declare that there is just one Savior and that's Jesus. But as we declare that in the North and the South, remember it begins with us. It begins with men of faith, and it begins with women of faith here in this place. How many of us are men of faith here? Men of faith? Yeah, good. Let me see. Them. Women of faith? Amen. Yeah, women of faith are excited. Good. So as we sing this, there's a time that uh, so the first verse is to the men. So if you have a man standing next to you, of course, wives, sing to your husbands. And... Uh, uh, but if, if there's someone next to you, just sing to them and declare to them, you're a man of faith. You're strong when you feel weak, right? Just declare, just prophesy to them that God hasn't called us to stay down, but God has called us to rise up in faith. And, and, and when we sing the next, the second verse, women, rise up women of the truth. As we sing that, prophesy to a woman standing next to you. Would you do that? Yes. And women also prophesy over the women next to us saying, God has called you out to rise out of your brokenness with a song of healing. Amen. And then the last was we're going to sing it together and we're going to prophesy over our church. Amen. And as we sing this, remember this is a song where we are, where we are proclaiming God's greatness. And we sing, shout to the north and shout to the south, shout to the east and the west. And as you do that, let's just, let's just imagine. And, and if you want to turn to different directions and just shout the glory of God, remember we are just, we're just saying, Lord, let there be one song that resounds all across Lucknow and that there is one Savior and that's Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, let's sing that. Rise up with 
remember today that the grace of Jesus is here. That in our weakness we are strong because of His grace that holds us. He's the one who fills our hearts with, with a new song. He's the one who changes the direction of our lives with His word. So as we're here in this place just worshiping Him, would you just lift up your hands to Him and say, Father, I'm broken, Lord. There are so many areas in my life that are broken. But it is your grace that causes me to rise above. It is your strength that causes me to change. I said today, Lord, I release myself to your will. safest place to be is in the hands of Jesus. The most glorious place to be is in the hands of Jesus. That's where his strength fills you up. That's where his grace is abundant. That's where his life flows. Would you open your heart and this moment of worship as we magnify him consumed by his life just place yourself in the hands of Jesus say father here I am here is love vast as the ocean in kindness as a flood when the prince of life our ransom shed for us his precious blood sing that again here is love vast as the ocean love in kindness as a flood when the prince Shed for us his precious blood, who his love will not remember, who can see.
Let me see thy kingdom only, and my life be to thy praise, cause thou alone shall be my glory, nothing in this world I see, if thou hast cleansed and sanctified me, thou
glory fill this place This is my desire, my prayer Let your presence fill my heart oh, Let his vessel offer us Respond to his greatness and his love today. Lift up our voices and sing. And you alone are holy. Yes, you alone are worthy. Oh Lord, and you deserve the glory. Jesus, you
up to Jesus and just be fixed on him. Jesus, you are. Just lift your hands to heaven. Jesus, you are. As you place one hand on your heart and your other hand lifted up to heaven. Jesus, you hand of God the Father, worthy of all glory, worthy of all honor, worthy of all praise that is ascribed to him throughout the world, the one who was, who is and who will be from everlasting to everlasting, the one who does not change, the one who remains the same, the one true, living, righteous, holy powerful, awesome God. It is before this God that we have gathered as a community. We have gathered as a body today to glorify His name, to worship His holy name, to exalt and magnify His holy name because His name is the only name that deserves all glory. His name is the only name that is higher than any other name. There is no other name. There is no other name. Come on, confess it and say, there is no other name that is higher, that is greater, that is more powerful than the name of our glorious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is before this God, it is before this Lord Jesus that we have come this morning. The Holy Spirit is here today to warm our hearts, to captivate our hearts if we allow Him to. He is here to touch us, He is here. To open our eyes that we may see Jesus in the fullness of his glory. And as the Apostle Paul prayed, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be open to see. Let that be our prayer this morning. Oh Lord, may I see you. May my heart understand you for who you really are. I bring you greetings from Mumbai. Mumbai is an amazing place. It's a gateway to the nation. Also, it's the financial capital of the nation. And we see um, hundreds of millionaires. I mean, and after about 2 o'clock in the morning, you find the Ferraris on the road. And it's, it's amazing to see so much money. And, but I know that God is going to give to the church the wealth of the heathen. Hallelujah. Amen. And as the same thing, I believe that Lucknow 
is a gateway to the north. The state of UP is a gateway state. And Lucknow is a key city. Here is where the watchmen sit. Here is where the leadership commands. Amen. Things that and allows things to get in and get out. A watchman stands at the gate. He knows what needs to come in and he knows what needs to go out. And as you watch the gates of this state, we pray that the wisdom of the Lord and the anointing of the Lord would give you that ability to command blessing over this state. And all that the devil has taken from the church would be returned sevenfold. Amen. This morning I want to talk about four dimensions of faith. Amen. Because I really believe that the church needs to come out in a dimension that it has never seen before. A dimension of faith. And we learn it from the Old Testament. I'm an Old Testament man. I look like that also. But, uh, you know, I'm an Old Testament man. I believe that there are so many keys in the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, which we call the Pentateuch, is the foundation. In those books is the revelation of God. Is the understanding of man. Everything that God has revealed is in these five books. Amen. The rest of the Bible is history, poetry, prophecy, apocalyptic literature, letters. Amen. But these five books are very important. And I believe that, uh, you know, as you read these five books together, you'll be able to understand the heart of who the Father is. Hallelujah. Amen. And I have fallen in love with the word. God, uh, when I came to Christ 44 years ago, I fell in love with God's word. Man. Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, the word of God has been very, 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 very precious to me. Amen. So I want us to open to Exodus chapter 14. And in Exodus chapter 14, I'm going to read certain parts of verses but we're going to see Exodus 14, 15, 16, 17. And I'm going to talk about four dimensions that God is, uh, you know, is developing in the church. Amen. He, that we go from faith to faith, from revelation to revelation, precept upon precept, line upon line, precept upon precept. And as we grow in faith, we come to the place where we can have the faith of God. Hallelujah. And we can command things to take place. And when we command things to take place, they will take place because we have grown in the faith. Amen. Now God, you know, we have, we have made so many Christians know God, know the word, but they still carry around the baby faith. But God wants us to grow. And so, and the Lord spake to Moses, verse 1, chapter 14, Exodus. Speak to the children of Israel that they may turn and encamp before Pai Hahiroth. Between Migdol and the sea over Baal Zephon, before it shall encamp by the sea. Amen. Hallelujah. Big words, but very, very specific. God is very specific. And when he uses these words, he uses these words so that we can understand what is happening. Israel had just come out. They had gone away from Pharaoh. They were carrying with them provisions. I want you to understand of uh, three million people with donkeys and with uh, carts and with children and with, uh, you know, with uh, all the wealth of the Egyptians. And I want you to understand that they're walking not on our Lucknow roads, but on sand. Your roads are, by the way, your roads are better than Bombay. Bombay, it seems that we're walking on Mars and, and the moon in different places. But here it is, your roads are a real blessing. Of course, I haven't gone to other sides of the city, so I wouldn't know that. <laughs> but it says there that they came to a place and now Moses is leading them. They've seen miracles. This was one nation that saw miracles that no other nation had seen. The astounding of miracles. The glory of God that came. How God kept in darkness the entire land. But where they were staying, there was light. Amen. It was amazing how God did this. And they, they witnessed. See, you've you got to understand that they had 400 years of slavery. If you're a slave for generation and generation, you have no faith. All you do is listen to somebody and wait for the sound of the whip. 
because you don't know what to do and so these people when they came out they needed a leader Moses was the leader and so when they came out they came to a place the Bible says to Pai Hahiroth that's an amazing place if you look in your uh, in your Bible atlas you'll find that Pai Hahiroth was a was a huge place it was like a rock a huge rock just at the edge of the Red Sea and this beautiful beach probably where three million people could fit God knew where to take them amen because God knows the geography of the land and so he brought them there and they came to this place. They came through the gorge. You know, there's a narrow gorge and they walked through the narrow gorge from the desert to the narrow gorge and to this beautiful, big, massive beach that could hold three and a half million people. And they were there. They were waiting there. What to do now? But before them also, there's a place called Migdol. Migdol was a tower. It was an old tower that probably used for military purposes where soldiers would live and when they lived in that tower they could watch the sea to see if any enemies would come and opposite that was a small little island it was a very tiny island which was called Balziphon Balziphon means in, in the language you, you, you got to understand that here is not only Hebrew, but there is also a mixture of Babylonian, Mesopotamian, Akkadian stuff. And Balziphon, Baal was the, was the Babylonian god. And Balziphon means the breath of Baal. And this was the west wind. It was coming from Baal. The wind was coming from Baal and blowing on the land and blessing the land. That's what they called it. That's why they called it Balziphon. Where the breath of Baal, they were living by the breath of Baal. We live by the breath of God, isn't it? And but when Moses came to this place and he, he saw this, you know, the beautiful beach. And he saw, you know, Pai Hahiroth. He saw the, the rocks and he saw the gorge and everything. You know, Pharaoh was laughing. And in verse 3 it says, for Pharaoh will say... Uh, of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land and the wilderness has shut them in. Another Bible says they, have, they are perplexed and the land has swallowed them. Now let me say something to you. Sometimes, you know, we feel that when we are freed of one thing, we get entangled with another thing. Have you felt that way? Suddenly there's another entanglement and then you get freed of that and you come home and you're breathing easy and then there's another problem. And they were going from problem to problem. There was first Pharaoh, now the land and now Pharaoh saying he sent the best of his army. I want you to know that the charioters, if you study the chariot, you know I went to that museum in Cairo. And I went to the Cairo museum. I spent three days at the museum. Even the, the guide who was with me, just me and my wife and the guide, we were three of us. And the guide who was with me, he said, I've never known anybody to ask so many questions. But I studied the chariots. I took photographs of the chariots. And you, you can understand that these chariots literally fly on top of the land. These were Pharaoh's elite soldiers. They were men of warfare. They, they knew strategy. They knew warfare. They, they could control horse. They could control chariots. They were trained men. And now he let loose the best against them. And they could see the dust of the chariots. They could see that they were here on this beach. And they knew that the, the, the waters were there. And they were perplexed. And sometimes your you know, the saying goes, and I think the saying has come from here, between a rock and a hard place. And you find yourself, and I call that faith through circumstance. When you come to a difficult point, you have no other alternative but to have faith. Amen. You can't do anything. Say, God, I, I just trust you today. And one of the things that God really wants to to, to increase is after we are born again, we come out of Egypt, is that when we reach certain circumstances, we will have faith to overcome the circumstances. 
and no matter how perplexed it is no matter how complicated things are no matter what goes on in our lives i want to tell you this morning i want to encourage you this morning that no matter how difficult your life is god has a plan that is grander than you ever thought of before amen and so as they were standing there the people said what are you going to do moses you brought us out of egypt we got all this stuff here amen we don't know what's going to happen to us we'll drown we'll 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 get killed the arrows of these egyptian soldiers is going to kill us the spears will go through us we'll lose our children we'll lose you know we were slaves we could have lived a, at least we could have lived a decent life and had a decent burial but now we are here by the sea what are you going to do have you ever come to a place when people ask you now what are you going to do amen i don't know what to do Sometimes we come to a place where we don't know what to do. We only have to trust God. And that's when faith kicks up in your heart. Faith comes by the word, hearing the word of God. That's how faith comes. That's why it's so important to have the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Whatsoever, Romans 14:23, whatsoever is without faith is sin. and so the, the you know the enemy sees you as you're entangled and then moses stands up now moses you know i he's probably one of the best leaders the world has ever had if you look at his leadership and you know you take out leadership principles some of the corporates have done that and given corporate language and the problem is the church is learning from the corporates and bringing it back to the church but look into the bible everything is already there I believe he said you know fear not Now imagine this man's voice I it's 3 million people for his voice to reach 3 million people his voice must have been bigger than pastor puppies <laughs> Amen He says stand still and see the salvation of God was 13 that word salvation you underline it because in hebrew that means yeshua so what he's saying is stand still yeshua you got to see what he does he's on the scene already he said the lord was 14 the lord will fight for you and he shall hold your peace that word there is shalom Amen. Now you go to Israel anywhere, you go on the bus, you sit down, you know, at a, at a restaurant, you have coffee on the street and, and everybody that passes you says shalom shalom. Yeah, shalom shalom. They say it twice now. Shalom shalom. Shalom means peace. We know that. But it does, just doesn't mean peace. We have that that's a wrong interpretation. Shalom actually means peace in the midst of acute conflict. Amen. It means that no matter what is happening around me I stand there knowing that Yeshua is with me. Amen. And I'm not going to shake and shiver because God is on my side. Faith is going to move my circumstances. Amen. And so Moses comes and in verse 21 he says Moses to stretch out his hand over the sea. Now look at <laughs> This is Moses he's stretching out his hand anybody you know stretched out your hand over a swimming pool No it doesn't happen nothing happens But this man stretched out. you you can't see that side There there's a small little island in front of him which is called Balzephon There was nothing else there Nothing else I want you to picture the scene I want you to see the rocks I want you to see the gorge from which they came that narrow gorge there's a huge beach there's the red sea you can't see anything more just the horizon of the sea and here's Moses standing right in front and he's raising his hand he stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back now listen listen look at the word by a strong east wind amen all that night so what happened was 
the contrary wind that was coming from the sea to the land god turned it around and made it from the land to the sea i want to tell you this mo- this morning no matter how contrary the winds are in your life god's going to there is a turn around coming amen stand be at peace there's a turn around coming hallelujah your circumstances are going to change because god is bigger than baal hallelujah we have just sung men of faith rise up hallelujah and we have just sung that there is no other god beside this god and yeshua is on the scene and when yeshua is on the scene he will change the contrary winds to your favor amen it's amazing how they did this it's amazing how you know how god does never before in the history of human kind has something happened like this and even till today there is proof of egyptian chariots under the red sea hallelujah where they crossed somebody said no this is a sea of reeds you know it was very easy to cross pastor willie you know this the the sea of reeds was only about it was 10 inches or 11 inches of water and they walked through god said walk through it said fantastic you know this is a big miracle because the whole egyptian army drowned in 11 inches of water amen when david went to kill goliath they said you know listen man this guy is so big he'll kill you david said he is so big i cannot miss amen god turns the circumstances around and i want to prophesy to you this morning that god is going to change your circumstances around because the contrary wind is about to change the stand where you are be at peace amen as you stand in peace watch the salvation of god keep your eyes on jesus and as you keep your eyes on jesus things are going to change and turn around tell your neighbor things are going to change they have to they will never be the same hallelujah you will never be the same you know these these egyptian slaves can you believe that these egyptian slaves after they saw pharaoh's army destroyed after they saw the red sea just swallow up they were not entangled in the land the egyptians were entangled in the land they drowned in the red sea that was history will have its own answers but here they are now at the edge and verse 31 chapter 14 says and israel saw the great work which the lord did on the egyptians and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and his servants moses now everything is fine when everything is fine it's so easy to trust your leaders when everything is fine your leader becomes oh my you got to see him he's he's a man of god but when things go opposite you're the first guy to shoot him is that true yes. that's very true and in chapter 15 we begin to we begin to see that you know uh, they started to it's it's amazing what god was doing uh was 22 so moses brought israel from the red sea and they went out to the wilderness of shur 3 days in the wilderness and found no water hallelujah the journey of faith goes on faith goes on turn around to your neighbor and say faith goes on amen but before that miriam now she becomes a prophetess and the only instrument they brought out was probably the timbrels so they sa- they started to make the dance hall floor of the red sea amen this is the other side now now when the when you are on the other side is easy to dance and sing amen because there's no opposition 3 days into the wilderness of shur if you study the wilderness of shur and i've been to that place i've taken a bus there it's dusty it's terrible there's no order it's dry as a bone there are desert insects there that i don't i don't even know the names of but it's amazing to see and just to imagine how did these children these animals these people who had never been outside egypt 
now walk in the desert and they came the bible says in verse 22 moses brought israel from the red sea they went out to the wilderness of shore and they're three days in the wilderness and found no water water is the life sustenance in the desert people will preserve water instead of anything else now listen this is serious stuff Three million people, no water. Amen. I'm not talking about two or three buckets when there is no water. I don't know. You know, in Bombay, we used to have water shortage. And we had water only two hours every day. And uh, we were just married at that time. So just for the two of us, we would gather the water. We bought a drum, a plastic drum. We gathered the water and the water came exactly for two hours. You could time it, open the tap and two hours is gone. Finished. No more water. But how are you going to look after three million people? How much water do animals need to drink? How much water do children need? How much water you need to wash your clothes and have a wash and have a bath? How much water you need to drink and cook? There's a lot of water. Water is the sustenance. And they came to a place called Mara. Mara means bitterness and for they were bitter and the name was called Mara. You know, when you are surrounded by your in environment, because the environment was bitter, the people got bitter. It's amazing, isn't it? People say your environment makes you. That's true because they came to this place and uh, they cried and they said, you know, they said, what are you doing? They murmured against Moses saying, what shall we drink? But listen, three days ago you were dancing with the timbrels. Three days ago you saw a miracle that no other nation had seen. Three days ago there was, there was something so glorious that, you know, it, it, really, it really changed your life. You were free from slavery. Now you're murmuring. See, in our Christian life, we can see, you know, the, the first miracle I ever noticed in my life, I was a young believer, it was 1973. And there was a man that came to our church and every night he would give an altar call. We had him for five days and I was, I was there with the music, so I was right in front and five days he gave the altar call and for five days there was this small little Sardaji boy, you know, with his hair tied on top who was born blind, he, he had no eyeballs, he was born without eyeballs. And every night he would come up and receive Jesus. Every night he would come up and receive Jesus. His parents would come up. On the last night, I saw him coming up and I saw him close his, you know, bow his head down and I saw his parents bow their head down. But when he put his head up, there were two little eyeballs in his eyes. I had never seen anything like that in my life. I didn't know what to do. I just wept overwhelmingly because there was a miracle that I had never, and something astounding that I had never ever seen in my life. And it happened not to a Christian believer. It happened to an unbeliever. Now you got to see that God is, you know, Sometimes we, you know, people come up and, you know, please pray for me, I'm sick. And you pray for them on Sunday. Next time they come, next Sunday come. Pastor, please pray for me, I'm not sick. I'm sick today. I say, okay, pray for you. Next Sunday they come, pray for me. Then the next Sunday they come, pray for me. Same thing. Same thing. Listen, get up. Faith by circumstances what made you cross the sea. Now you need a little more faith. Hallelujah. That faith was for that time. Now this faith is for this time. And so when they came there, they, Moses cried to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree. And they cut that tree down and they threw it in the water. And the water turned sweet. You know, I believe that the cross of Jesus can make your life sweet. Amen. That is the tree. My Savior died on a tree. And when his, his life, his cross, 
and the workings of his crosses in my life, the bitterness goes, the criticism goes, the sarcasm goes, those little complaints go away. Amen. Hallelujah. And we, you know, there, there's a grumbling amongst the people. I don't like people grumbling. They, they grumble in my church, I will be at their doorstep, door post the next day. So what's wrong with you? Don't you have any faith? Amen. And I believe that this is so important. And then God says to them, now see God brings them to a greater realm. Look at verse 26 and he said, if you will diligently, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight. And will give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Now he, God knew that they were going to spend 40 years in the desert. He said not one of you guys are going to be sick. Hallelujah. Can you take this promise for yourself today? Saying that you know once you leave your bitterness you get healed. Amen. Is it true isn't it? You, lo you, you lose your murmuring, you get healed. There are many diseases in our lives because we all, all the time, you know, every morning we get up, we don't like the day, we don't like the bed, we don't like the, the coffee, we don't like the breakfast, we complain against our wife, the salt is so much. You know, my mother never cooked like that. <laughs> but when the tree of life comes into my life, my sickness goes away. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe there is deliverance in your life once the tree of life becomes yours. Amen. Number three. So, number one, faith by circumstances. Faith in the finished work of the cross. Hallelujah. The enemy can't stand the cross. He hates it. Because there, when Jesus Christ, it is finished. It is finished where there was no more work left for God to do any more thing. Finished. It was there also the devil was finished. Amen. It was a twofold work. Number three. What, chapter 16 verse 1. Okay, chapter 15 verse 27. And they came to Elim where there were 12 wells of water. And three score and ten palm trees. And there they are encamped by the waters. Now see, listen, when, when, when you stop grumbling, God will give you waters and food. Amen. Stop grumbling. You'll see everything happen. Stop murmuring. Stop speaking against the people in the church. Stop speaking against the leaders. God will open the way for you. Hallelujah. The bitterness will go away. And the cleansing power of God will come. Number three, he said, you know, they took their journey from Elam. And all the congregation of Israel came to the wilderness of sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. And in verse 2, chapter 16, the whole congregation murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. See, they carried on murmuring. Would to God that we died by, by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. Now they're not blaming Pharaoh. Now they're blaming God. See, we have to put blame on somebody. When God asked Adam, what you did? He said, I'm not me, not me, Lord. My wife. She was the one. Correct. When he asked her, what you did? Not me, not me. It's the devil. The devil had nobody else to blame. But the thing is this. Verse 4. And I want you to look at chapter 16, verse 4. He says, the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather certain rate every day. That I may prove to them whether they will walk in my law or no. You know what? From that day onwards, God gave them supernatural provision. I want you to know, not only water, but bread. God, he, you know, the, the, the Old Testament says, I will bless your bread and your water. Hallelujah. Can you believe three and a half million people on bread every day, every morning for 40 years? Can you see the faithfulness of God? Water for 40 years. Probably, maybe, you know, I, I think I calculated it, but I don't know where I kept that calculation. It's probably 
uh, nearly 200 good strains full of water tankers. That much water every day. If God is faithful for you as you walk through your wilderness, how faithful will he be when you reach your promised land? Hallelujah. None of these diseases. I want you to know that you will never be sick. Turn around to your neighbor and say, I will never be sick. I'll never be sick. So we break the power of diabetes in Jesus' name. And if you are suffering from diabetes this morning, we break it in Jesus' name. We command the body and all the functions of the body, your blood and your blood chemistry to be made whole. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I was surprised. I went to visit a friend of mine and he's diabetic. And he says, guess what? My dog is diabetic. I said, I didn't know dogs have diabetes. See, <laughs> you affect your circumstances. The poor, poor dog is diabetic. He, he doesn't need sugar. Dogs don't need sugar. But whatever it is, I want you to know something. That the third level of faith is supernatural provision. Do you believe that you will be supernaturally provided? You don't need. You need God. You don't need people. Don't look to people. Don't look to your boss. Don't look for the bonuses. Look to God. God will give you what he needs to give you. Just like my brother said. He will give you more in abundance. Hallelujah. That's who he is. Let's go to chapter 17. And as they were coming in the land, they met these people called Amalekites. Who were the Amalekites? I don't know if you studied Amalek. But if you study Amalek, they were basically from the tribes of the Nephilims. Who were the Nephilims? They were giants. They were hybrid people. They were the guys that had six fingers and six toes. The Bible talks about it. They were, they were strong. Goliath was a Nephilim. Og was a Nephilim. They faced these giants in the land. And so Israel now starts to conquer their enemies. It's time the level of faith you are wanting to walk in now will give you the ability to conquer your enemies no matter how big they are. Hallelujah. I don't know if you studied giantology. I've done a whole course on giantology. And you'll find some of the skulls that they have dug up is bigger than four feet. Imagine the size of those guys. But I want to say something to you. I want to say that then verse, verse 8, chapter 17, verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in a Rephidim. Rephidim is a place where the giants lived. There was a great battle. And Moses was up there. And, and said to Joshua, choose us out men, go out and fight with Amalek. Now you remember, these are slaves. They don't know how to fight. They only know how to sticks and stones to throw. But I'm telling you something. When God brings enemies before you, he will give you the strategy and the ability to pull them down no matter how big they are. Because our warfare is not against flesh and blood. And he says, we'll go out tomorrow and I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Hallelujah. That's authority. Rod speaks of authority. Moses stood with God's authority on top there. And when his hands were up, they were winning. When his hands fell down, they were losing. And so Aaron and her come and hold his hands up. Amen. Now we need to help our leaders. Amen. Our leaders are not supermen. They don't come on the pulpit and open their shirt and you see that S so Superman. No, they don't. They're ordinary people. They need encouragement. Hallelujah. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat and Aaron and her stayed up his hands and one side and the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Now I, wanted to, I want you to know that God 
will give you victory over your enemies. The level of faith where God wants to, you to come is the level of faith that you will always find victory over every enemy that comes against you. Be it sickness, be it disease, be it finances, be it opposition, be it anything. I want you to know God will deal with your enemies. Amen. So here is the levels of faith that goes on. Faith by circumstances, number one. Faith by the finished work of the cross of Calvary, number two. Faith by the lifelong supernatural provision. That's how I live. Amen. I don't live by my salary. And sometimes I don't have a salary. We don't live because we get support from the church. We live because God supports us. Amen. And lastly, faith for winning every warfare. Turn around to your neighbor and say, you're a winner. You're a winner. It doesn't matter whether you're old or you're young. You're a winner. When you pray, Amen. Just raise up your hands to God and say, listen, devil, look at me. Devil, have a look at me. Amen. I know who I am and I know whose I am. You can't fool around with me. You try to fool around with me, man. I remember some one, a long time back, I went to see one of those Bruce Lee movies, what was that? Enter the Dragon. Hmm? And I like, I like those guys, you know, they, 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 they stand in front like that. And they got that karate pose. And he looks at his opponent and he says, <laughs> You seen that action? He's standing there. He says, Come on, that's who you are. Hallelujah, that's who you are. The enemy won't come. You just, come on, come. Come on, I'll show you something. Hallelujah, I'll show you whose I am. This is what God wants you, to lift your faith. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you this morning that you called us to believe you, to walk in faith, to know, Lord, that there is nothing, nothing that can come against the church because Jesus said, I by myself will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And Father, today, because we belong here, Lord, I thank you that when they reached the promised land, Lord, I thank you. Forty years, you said, Lord, their shirts on their back did not wear away. Neither the shoes on their feet become thinner. That means when I was a baby, when I left the promised land, my shoes and my clothes grew with me. Father, I live in a season of the miraculous. Take your right hand, put on your heart. Say, God, release that miraculous to me in the name of Jesus. I want faith. Lord, faith like I've never had before. Faith that can turn around things. Faith that can let the enemy run. Faith, Lord, for my circumstances. Faith to turn, Lord, and provide me provision all my life. Faith that enables me to be a winner and to be on top. That you said, I shall be from above and not below. I am the head and not the tail. And when the enemy comes on one direction, he shall flee in seven. Thank you, Lord, for that. We bless you this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor.